Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox. I hope you guys are having an incredible day today. It is my second video of the year and you guys know I had to jump right back into the DIY projects and that is exactly what we are going to be focusing on today. And today I have five DIY projects for you guys. And the great thing about all of these projects is that they are super affordable. They are budget friendly. Well, I guess those are literally the same thing. They're pretty simple. And at the same time, all of them are made of clay. So the actual supplies you need for these projects are super minimal. You need basically some clay and some paint to finish off your project. I think the reason I've been loving clay so much is that I recently took some pottery classes with McKenna, as you guys probably have seen on my Instagram story. If you do not follow me, make sure to head over to Instagram. It's Lone Fox Home and follow along. But we took a lot of pottery classes over November and it was just so much fun. I absolutely loved using the clay. And sadly, I'm not able to have a pottery wheel in my apartment and, you know, bring that all back because I don't have a kiln and everything that you do need. However, I've been loving working with clay as a medium lately. And it's been a lot of fun for me to create like decor that you wouldn't think is achievable with clay but it's actually extremely simple and easy. Um, and besides that, I also wanted to mention to you guys that I am having a little sale over on Lone Fox today. If you guys did not know, I have an online shop, lonefox.com, where I sell so many really cute home decor and DIY goods. I have merch. There's just a whole vast array of stuff. And I'm having a little New Year sale, so you can use code 2021 for 15% off of your order. And if you guys did not already know, all orders over $75 ship for free in the US, which is also an amazing little thing because you get the discount and the free shipping if you live in the United States. <laughs> but let's get started. Let's start off by talking about the tools and supplies I'm going to be using. I'm first starting off with some clay, of course. This is original Sculpey clay. I have a large eight pound box, but you can totally get it per pack. And then I'm also going to be using some thick aluminum wire, an X-Acto knife, a rolling pin, a dense brush, a blade, and a little scoring needle. Alrighty, you guys, so let's get to work. The first thing that I did was I grabbed a generous amount of clay and I'm going to be rolling this out into a long log section. And basically you're going to want to be able to cut four equal pieces of clay because we're going to be creating some rings with it. And I just ended up making mine about three quarters of an inch thick. And as you can see here, I'm going in with my blade section and kind of just maneuvering the clay into what I think could be a circular shape, cutting it where I know that I would probably want to cut it anyways. And then I measured out four more pieces Pieces of clay the same exact length as the first one that we chopped so you're basically gonna want four of these I actually only ended up using three of the rings however I did four just for good measure once those are all chopped up, you're going to want to go ahead and mend the two cut ends together. So all you really have to do is just kind of press them together and use your finger to just warm up the clay and mend those edges together to create a perfect ring. And you could totally work with this how you'd like to. I just try to like form it with my fingers, press it as I can and smooth out any of the details along the way. And keep in mind, guys, you could also go back in and sand this later. So if you get any fingerprints, do not worry about that at all. But you're going to want to close off all of your little ring sections as I'm doing here. So yes, we did create perfect circles just to cut them in half because we're going to want these half circle, almost macaroni shaped pieces because these are going to be able to be used on the side of our vase to create the perfect shape. So I cut them in half and you're just going to pop these in the oven and bake according to your clay's instructions, which for me was about 30 minutes. Once they came out, they should look similar to this. And then I went ahead and I grabbed a 220 grit sandpaper because as you can see, the edges were not perfect. So all you have to do is kind of rub those cut edges along the sandpaper. And once you rub it for a, a quite a bit, you're gonna get a nice kind of clean finish on that edge, which is a little bit more stable for gluing. So I went through and I sanded down all of those edges. And this vessel here is from the dollar store, which I love. And I ended up using my hot glue. It is the Gorilla Hot Glue, so it bonds perfectly with glass. I've used this on all my glass projects and it is truly the best glue that I've used. And I'm gonna start off at the bottom side of my vase on one side and I'm going to add glue to both of our little sanded edges. And you're gonna wanna glue these in a row. I ended up doing three of them in a row, kind of going up from the bottom up to the top, but you could probably do four if you wanted to. However, I wanted a little bit of space above the third as you can see here, just because I kind of liked the minimalism of that. And you're gonna repeat the same exact steps on the opposite side. And now comes the fun part of painting. So I grabbed a couple of like corally pink tones. I mixed in a little bit of brown to neutralize the pink color and then also some white just to lighten up the overall shade. And I of course had to add a little bit of baking soda. As you guys know, adding baking soda to paint just kind of gives it more of a ceramic finish, which I love. And I knew I wanted this vase to almost appear as it was made from clay or ceramic. However, we just made a couple of elements from clay and then we used a glass vase as the base. Thank you. 
Something I noticed about this paint mixture is that it adheres really, really nicely to glass, so you do not have to worry about that at all. It doesn't scratch off at all. However, it does need two coats for sure, so make sure to apply two generous coats of this paint, and then once you're done, you have your handmade, kind of funky, modernized vessel. Moving on into project number two, this one is definitely probably the easiest of all of them because we are going to be using a mold for our clay. And this is essentially a coaster mold, which I will link it below for you guys. I got this a while back for a set of resin coasters I was using, and traditionally you would use this mold for resin, of course. However, I'm going to go in and fill this mold, since I had it on hand, with some clay. And I just went over the top of it with my roller here. These clear rolling pins are super, super nice for clay, so I highly suggest investing in one if you want to do a lot of clay projects in the future. I got mine at Joann's and I will link it below for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and unmold my little clay section. And at this point, you could totally rework it if you want to. You could add additional details if need be. But I wanted to add one more element, which was just a little ball of clay. So I'm rolling up just a small little section of scrap clay into a ball shape and pressing it onto one side of our coaster area. And then once I press that down, I'm actually going to be using one of those incense sticks, which I got at the Dollar Tree, actually. And I'm going to be pressing that into the top to create a little hole. That way, once we bake this, we have a place to put our incense stick in the future. Once that comes out of the oven, I use this vintage white paint by Folk Art, which is just kind of like a warmish toned white. It's actually my favorite off-white color for sure from them because some of them can lean a little bit pink or a little bit yellow, but this one's a true white with just like a tiny bit of an off-white look. So I went ahead and I painted the top and the bottom of my instance holder with this vintage white paint. And then once that was completely painted on there, I wanted to add, of course, a little bit of a brass detail. And so I used this paint here, which I will link it below for you guys as well. Everything will be to below. I won't say it anymore throughout the video, I swear. And um, I'm going to go around the edge and use one of these like flat brushes. I love using these kind of flat, very angular brushes, I guess you could say, to kind of cleanly apply the paint all the way around the edge. The nice thing about putting it in the mold is that you do have a very even edge on it. So all you have to do is go around and make sure that you apply a generous coat of your brass gilded paint to the edge of this. And I also actually applied the paint to the ball on the top as well, just to kind of add a little bit more of detail. I think this ended up looking super cute in the end. And honestly, it looks really expensive, which I love. Of course, you guys know I had to do a taper holder. I feel like whenever I do any form of clay project uh, with vases and just like different fun, cute little items for your home, I always stumble across these really cute taper holders. So I started off by taking, again, a generous amount of clay, and I'm going to be rolling this into a decently thick log. I would probably say this is about one and a half inches wide. And right in the middle of that log, I'm going to press down one of the taper candles because we're going to want to, of course, create a mold. That way we're able to apply taper candles into this once it is fully dried down. So I just pressed it down into the clay. I flipped it on its backside. And as I was bending this, like how cute would it look like this, you guys? Like, I think this is so cute as well if you wanted to just bake it as is like this. However, I wanted to do a full on circle. So I molded it into the shape that I liked and I used my blade tool just to cut off the little end sections there because again, just like the uh, project at the start, we wanna go ahead and form this into a circular shape. However, because this is a lot thicker and it needs to be very sturdy for this particular project, I scored it with a needle just to kind of get the clay worked up in that area. And then I'm going back in with some water on a very dense brush and almost creating like a slip material, which is essentially a wet clay that will then dry down and harden. So I'm going to put these together. And once that slip kind of connects in the center there, you could smooth out all of the edges all the way around going around in a circle. This does take a little bit of time just to make sure it's nice and secure. But once you have it fully done, you can kind of just go and flip it around, secure all those edges and make sure that all the cracks and crevices are perfectly smoothed over and it is nicely secured into a circular shape. And we 
are not done yet. We still do need to create a base that our circle's going to sit on. So what I did was I just used a rolling pin and I rolled out a little bit of scrap clay and I'm going to just be using a paper cup, which I cut the bottom out of. As you can see here with my X-Acto knife, I just cut the bottom out of a paper cup. I'm going to be using that as almost a little cookie cutter to cookie cut or clay cut out a circular shape like shown here. And you're just gonna bake these together in the oven. Again, according to your clay's instructions, it's going to vary depending on the thickness. I actually ended up taking out the base first and then I ended up leaving the kind of thicker circular object in for quite a bit longer. And next I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper. You're just gonna want a very high grit. That way you're not, you know, scuffing or marring up the surface. This is just going to smooth out any imperfections. Once that was all sanded, we're gonna go ahead and connect our two pieces together. Now, this is something I didn't really think about. Whenever I think about clay, I feel like it always has to be connected during the kind of wet process and then baked into a dry finished piece, but you can totally glue together different pieces of clay to create a finished object. And that's exactly what I did here. And then I also went in with some of this folk art paint, which is called parchment. However, I didn't really like the way that it looked. I figured I'd leave it in here just to show you guys the color in case you liked it yourself, but it looked really pretty and like a light tan tone in the bottle but as you paint it on as it and it dries it almost turns into a baby pink color which was not the kind of colorway I was looking for for this particular piece I wanted it to be more kind of clean and very kind of stark and white but just with a tiny dash of color and this one just kind of made it a little bit too vibrant for me which I know sounds odd because it doesn't look vibrant on camera but in person it was very pink so I just went over the top of it with some white acrylic paint and you're good to go this finishes off your little taper candle holder and you can make these in different shapes and different sizes <laughs> For our next project, I've really been inspired by these terracotta vases I've seen all over Pinterest and online that have these really kind of funky handles to them, so I wanted to do my own take on it. Now, I bought this very expensive water bottle a long time ago, and I drank the water. It was great, by the way. However, the bottle, the water bottle cost me like $8. I was like, I'm keeping this bottle and recycling it. So that's exactly what I'm going to be using in today's project. It's an Antipodes bottle, if you guys are curious. And what I started off by doing was taking some clay, and I'm going to be flattening this out into about a quarter quarter inch sheet and I'm going to be covering the entire bottle in this clay and the reason I did this was because I wanted the actual finished vase to have some texture to it and I didn't want to only have like a ceramic finish paint on it I wanted you to be able to see that it was actually constructed of clay and it didn't look like something that was just painted with you know a ceramic paint so I did create a couple sheets of clay which were about a quarter inch each and I just pieced them together as I kind of pressed it around the entire glass bottle so as you can see here the clay did not meet up perfectly at all but a great method for making sure that your clay is nice and smooth is to actually bring your rolling pin over and roll it on top as you're kind of pressing the clay in it will really kind of tighten up any seams you might have and overall just make the clay kind of appear a bit more smooth so I used the rolling pin and kind of went over the entire bottle which I thought worked really nicely for me and I just used scrap pieces of clay on the bottom here things that I kept from past projects pressed it on and smoothed it out with the rolling pin and you are good to go so let's go ahead and make the hand Handles, which is the most fun part in my opinion. So this is where we're introducing that wire that I was talking about at the beginning and I will link below the wire I'm using you guys. It is an aluminum wire so it's super easy to bend and cut but it's going to add so much stability to our handles. So I'm forming out my small handle here and I cut about a three and a half inch strip of wire for our small handle and a six inch strip for our large handle. So once you have the shape kind of created with your wire you're going to go ahead and wrap the clay all the way around the wire so that it is kind of just in the middle of your clay if that makes sense. Now, if I was to go back in time and redo this project, I would make the handles thicker for sure. I just made them a little bit too thin, which I still love the way that this vase turned out. I think it's super cute, but I would have added a little bit more clay just to make them seem a bit more substantial and thick because they just seem a little bit thin. However, it's totally fine. You could adjust this to whatever you want it to look like. So I went ahead, I wrapped both the large and the small handles. And as you can see, the left side, I've already applied the handles to. And all you need to do to apply the handle on is just to kind of press it in to start so that the wire goes 
those into the clay of our vase and then you're gonna go around and smooth over the top of that traditionally if you were working with this in a ceramic setting you would go create some slip and you would score it and you would put it on there and you would just mend it together however because this is just a clay object I just went ahead and I pressed the wire in smoothed out all of the edges and I just popped this into the oven for about 25 minutes everywhere on this vase actually has a very thin layer of clay about a quarter of an inch so that's all it really needed was 25 minutes I popped it out let it cool down and I used my terracotta spray paint and I sprayed the entire outside of this vessel which I really think gave it that finished look um, I think I want to go back in and maybe add a little bit of a distressing to it with some white paint or just give it a little bit of an antiqued look but for now I really love the terracotta finish And you guys know I had to save my favorite project for last, which is that U-shaped taper candle holder. I am so obsessed with this, and you are going to need a pretty substantial amount of clay for this project. I used quite a bit, as you can see here, and I rolled it into what I would say is probably a two-inch wide log, and I wanted this to have more of a squared off, kind of angular look to it, so I used my rolling pin to press down on one side of our log, which flattened it, and then it also flattened the side against the table, of course, and then I flipped it into the opposite direction to flatten down this side and this is going to kind of create a more square like tube of clay I guess you could say or a very long rectangle in a sense but I'm just going around pressing this down making sure our edges are nice and sharp with that rolling pin and once you have that kind of uh, structure that you're looking for you can go ahead and mold it and bend it into the shape that you're looking for so for me it was this almost U shape because I've just been loving these very organic ceramic pieces lately and I wanted to share with you guys how easy it is to create one at home so so I did this U shape here. I'm going over the top of it again with my rolling pin and then I'm cutting off the top section. This is where you can gauge how tall or how short you want your candle holder to be. But I kept mine pretty tall and then I also went on to the bottom side and chopped off a generous amount as well because this is going to be where the actual candle holder is going to kind of sit. But you're going to want to do this prior to baking it. That way it is just easier for you. And in the top of one of your U sections on either side, you're going to do the same thing to both sides. I just started off by removing some extra excess clay. That way when I pushed my taper candle inside, I wasn't just pushing clay in all these random directions and just forming my shape. I was more so getting rid of some of the clay to start and then pushing my candle inside, creating the mold for that actual candle to stick inside of, and then cutting off any additional clay in any areas. That way it was very uniform from top to bottom. Once this came out of the oven, I gave it a coat of this glossy almond spray paint, and I thought a gloss would be really fun on this. I never gravitate towards gloss, but I thought it would add a retro touch, and that finishes off your taper candle holder. And there you go, you guys. That finishes off today's new video. I hope that you enjoyed these projects. And if you guys like working with clay as well, please give this video a thumbs up. Or if you enjoyed my projects, a thumbs up always helps out the channel, you guys. We are at... 940,000. We are so close to a million, which is absolutely insane. And quickly, last but not least, before letting you guys enjoy the rest of your day, I do want to let you guys know that there is a little sale happening over on Lone Fox. Take 15% off of your order with code 2021. You can also get free shipping on US orders over $75. So the link to shop is below for you guys, and I will catch all of you in my next one. Have an amazing rest of your day, and yeah, I am just so happy to be back on YouTube. I took a little break for a couple of weeks, so this is exciting to be refilming. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.